Hello everyone and welcome to Momentum. I am Guido Perez, the Regional Manager for the Americas at Micro, and I am so pleased to virtually welcome you to this year's event as we come together to explore the latest innovations and advancements reshaping the global mining industry. Today is going to be jam-packed with sessions including demos for exciting new products, features and illuminating discussions focused on hot topics like digital transformation. The last year has been one of incredible growth and acceleration in the Americas. Our local team has more than doubled uh, over the last year to support the substantial client growth we've seen in our region. We continue growing and moving forward, and I believe we are poised for exciting things to come for our customers in the year ahead. Our team at Micromind keeps a close eye on the challenges our clients face and how we can help you to tackle them. We are hard at work with all of you to build the strongest possible ecosystem for organizations across the value chain, enabling you to safely collaborate and improve efficiency of your exploration and mining projects. We continue to see growing interactions across our full range of products. That includes Micromine Elastri, joining Origin and Beyond via integration with Micromine Nexus, allowing users to better collaborate and deliver actionable mine schedules. And we have already seen users grow for these products beyond our greatest expectations, including growing usage by exploration geologists. We are also excited about our new underground metals scheduling tool to come in the new year. Innovations like this are why I'm so excited for the months and years ahead. Tomorrow, we'll present new challenges, no doubt, and we are ready to take them on with you. That's exactly what Micromine has done over the last 36 years. We continue to set the standard today for innovation and leadership in the industry. Our recent acquisition by Aspentec only strengthens that position as we grow our business more quickly, bring in new talent and expertise, and leverage Aspentec's long-time strengths in asset optimization software. Even with the most advanced technology, our progress still depends on the people who make the decisions behind the technology. So enjoy this year's momentum as we celebrate the people who drive the industry forward and all of their contributions. Welcome to Momentum. Hello, welcome to the annual global event, Momentum from Micromine. Uh, this event features the latest technology and updated technology uh, from Micromine. But it also takes a step back to look at trends in the industry, challenges in the industry, and it's going to be multiple sessions running globally. And so Micromine's teamed up with Mining Now, and we're going to do a special episode of the show uh, featuring different panelists to sort of offer those different perspectives. Now, Micromine's tagline is next generation technology for mining. So the three panelists are going to be Ian Borg. He's a senior geologist at Vizsla Copper Corp. Um, he's uh, joining us through Zoom. And then we have Guido Perez. He's a regional manager at uh, America's Micromine. And Baram Barami. He is a senior geologist at, and data specialist at Equity Exploration Consultants. Everyone, welcome to Mining Now for Momentum. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to separate it off so we're not all going at the same time. So I'll just sort of give you each chunks. But feel free um, during this discussion if you know you got something to add or, or something sort of lines up with something that you're, you've been sort of thinking about. Please feel free to jump in. Um, but I want to start with you, Guido. Is can you give us that snapshot of? I mean, anybody logging on here is obviously going to know who Micromine is, but maybe just highlight some, maybe some acquisitions, some global growth, things like that, that Micromine's been up to in the last year. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a really uh, exciting year uh, for us at Micromine. The company has gone through a lot of uh, changes. Uh, as you well mentioned, we did uh, some acquisitions, products like Spry or Alastri were acquired last summer. And this is a complimentary offer to Micromine and it's going to help us to position as a leader in the scheduling market. The company has also had a really rapid expansion and growth. Uh, particularly in the Americas, where we have increased by 30%, 40% mm. headcount, especially focusing on support and customer services. Another thing that uh, has happened during the year is, you know, uh, 
we've been attending and participating again and in in-person conferences. This is, has given us the opportunity to showcase some of our latest releases and gather feedback from the industry and uh, our partners. And, and lastly, yeah, the recent acquisition by Aspen Tech, Aspen Technologies, which is something really, really exciting happening at Micromine and is definitely going to help us uh, position as a leader within the uh, mining industry since Aspen Technology is a, is, it will bring new expertise and, and opportunities uh, to, for Micromine to continue growing uh, on a global scale. We've had Aspen Tech on the show and it's uh, their capabilities <laughs> merge with Micromine. That's quite the force. Um, can you, the the two acquisitions, Spry and, and Elastri, is that how you say it? That's right, yes. Could you just give a quick overview of those two? Yeah, absolutely. So both of them are scheduling solutions. Spry is more focused on uh, underground and, and open pit uh, soft commodities like coal, for okay. example, and then we have Alastri. No, Alastri is a really, a really powerful scheduling tool. Uh, focus on or specialize on hard rock open pit projects and allows our clients to rerun scenarios, saving a lot of time. And also has a really cutting edge uh, visualizations that allows them, yeah, to uh, pretty much spot any errors in their uh, planning way ahead of time. Um, I, I mean, I, we could do probably a show on both of those and, and do a whole unpacking, yeah. but I'm, I'm going to uh, to follow the rules and keep within my few minutes for each yeah, yeah. section. Um, so, Baram, I want to talk to you. You you really focus on the the technical side, uh, data science, GIS, um, you know, machine learning, and that. So, I want to sort of split uh, your topics into two: is challenges within the industry. Um, but but then also sort of the trends and the opportunities. But can we first focus on the, the challenges that the industry is facing, sort of on a whole, if you could? Sure thing. Um, I think they kind of go hand in hand. Mm. Uh, with the trends and the challenges, you know, as it both continue the same way, we kind of find different ways to tackle them. And so um, I see one of the challenges is uh, data centralization and just kind of, you know, there's a lot of uh, projects, for example, that have legacy data, and um, we combine this with new data that's coming in, and we are collecting immense amount of data, and it's it's a great thing. It's We have so many different equipments, they're advancing, and we are just kind of gathering more and more, um, but just because we can collect them doesn't mean we can um, use them readily. So sometimes it's a uh, time crunch, sometimes it's a uh, bud budgeting crunch, um, so if you want to make the use of the data the most, we got to spend some time and, um, yeah, put effort uh, into, you know, making use of the data that we collect. So I think for me, one of the challenges I see is, um, you know, making use of the data. I mean, I'm a data specialist, so I'm right. a bit biased, but I think, yeah, if, uh, if you're collecting it, it's using it. It's a theme that we've seen on the show lots, with people talking about that and from all different angles. Is the industry getting to a point now where it can this these there's some consistency of how to start collecting the data right from the get go, or is that historical like legacy data? How in percentage wise is that still half the data that needs to be reviewed, or or is it becoming less as new data becomes quicker to sort of get together? I think it really depends on projects. Uh, some projects it's. It could be 80%. Uh, some projects, it's uh, it's fresh, so everything is uh, everything is new. So, you know, a lot of uh, historic exploration projects, uh, they might have uh, had uh, a lot of data, but how it was collected and how it's, uh, how it's used, maybe it's different. You know, we talk about analytical um, uh, capabilities has, mm. have changed, and um, so... In terms of how much of each are there, you really have to look at the projects. And uh, but from my experience, uh, you almost always deal with uh, legacy data, and mm. you should because there is wealth of money that was spent, and you want to make most of it. How long have you been within the industry? Uh, Twelve years. So uh, let's say let's go ten years ago compared to the data. Let's say on a new project, how much data would you get n now? Compared to the same project ten years ago, is it just off the charts in comparison? Well, again, some of the projects are, I've been uh, mostly on a greenfield uh, projects and uh, yeah, I mean, 10 years ago, it's it was just sometimes your field book and just maybe a couple of uh, 
uh, GPS points. And I see you over here smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, now you know I can go to go out and have my phone that can collect so many different things, and I can have a drone with me. It can take imagery, and we can make it 3D. Um, we can make a digital elevation model. So it's I I, I see things being more readily available. Mm -hmm. A lot of technologies were there before, but now like you look at phones, how much like before you had the camera and the GPS and now with phone, you have both. That's just one example. So, and a lot of data is also, you can kind of think of it, uh, you know, like for example, geophysical instruments, you know, before maybe they were just kind of points, points every 30 seconds or something, but now it's, it can be a continuous data collection. So it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely grown and w whichever project I look at, you have more uh, tools available and uh, more data available. You, you already touched on it too, is the consolidation of tools. Um, that I mean, that's obviously made some some big leaps. Um, for from the the experience of being out in the field, um, sort of these tools kind of getting merged into one and on one platform and stuff. Um, how, how's that? How much has that advanced for you? But but also has it has it made it easier? What sort of the setup for you now if you go out into the field? I like to think it's easier. There's always learning curves uh, with uh, any new technology. Um, you know, we, for example, we do a lot of mapping. And uh, again, before maybe with was paper maps, you know, print out of the maps before, and now it's just with the phone. But, you know, with, uh, with technology comes glitches. And sometimes, uh, you know, like your tablet might not work under the rain or something versus mm -hmm. we've, we kind of, as geologists, we figured out a field notebook, you know, it's just like write in rain pen and you could just do whatever you want it. And uh, we just, there is um, less flexibility because we are just kind of adopting to it. But for sure, for me, it's uh, the amount of data that we collect becomes more useful and readily available. And I've kind of mentioned uh, before, there is a demand for real time uh, mm, decision making. Yeah. And I think how we used to do it before, uh, Maybe it's maybe more versatile, but even though it's now we are just on a learning curve, the data we collect, it can be readily available versus before it would take some time to kind of come back together and put everything together. Sometimes might be a bit of an understatement. Sometimes it takes a <laughs> long time. <laughs> yeah. um, Guido, I'm going to I'm gonna just jump because I, I saw you sort of smiling over uh, out of the corner of my eye there. So um, is it w when you're hearing uh, some of the just going through it, um, it does sort of is there you know we're we're doing a micro mine event so we are allowed to shamelessly plug it when you hear that do, are there sort of products and services that come into mind to go okay that is what that this plugs in here no absolutely and we we have also identified and agree on on, on all those challenges that Marat was mentioning uh, as a matter of fact micro mine believe that all this information all this data that uh, companies are now collecting and collecting should be connected in in one platform in a, a structured and organized way so that it's effective for them to look at them and always making sure they're working on the latest versions and there is no misinterpretations and there, there might be multiple users also uh, having access to the same information and having a platform that allows you to organize all these different files. Uh, you also mentioned legacy. Yeah, there, there might be multiple different files. Uh, having all those consolidated and integrated in one platform in a structure uh, in a structured way, I think is key, and it, it, it will it will get, uh, bring a lot of value to those companies working on the field and generating data, more and more data. No? So absolutely, Pro uh, we have a product that we just released last year called Micromine Nexus. Mm -hmm. It's a, a data structure solution uh, that allows, yeah, allows our clients to store uh, data in an organized in an organized way. So that, and also they can go back and audit any any changes that any person might have done on the files. How important is it for you um, when you're hearing Brom talk that 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 development the the relationship of developing the software to like you're talking about going out on the field and the pen and I, I've, I've done inventorying and out in the field and I've done it with a tablet and it's like, okay, so depends, depends on the environment you're in, right? If it's a really dusty environment, a tablet can be a little more of a struggle, but then also the paper, you can't read your own writing because there's wind blowing and sometimes, so it all depends on your environment. Um, how important is that sort of that relationship with the, you know, greenfield exploration and the, the software developers who aren't necessarily you know, they're not necessarily talking to each other. So Micromine is developing that within that relationship. Well, absolutely. We, we, we pay close attention to the feedback that we receive from our clients. 
and, and we develop, uh, develop our solutions as such. Uh, yeah, for, for us, that platform, uh, we think is, is instrumental for them because it will allow them to not only uh, help those working on, on the field, but also it will be a tool that can be used across multiple departments. It's a, it's a mining design solution. So right. it allowed the, the intercommunication between geologists on the field and, and mining engineers at the office or on site, for example, no? so mm -hmm. that they all can be working on the same files or on different files, but uh, having access to them all in real time. Um, Ian, Ian, I don't want to forget about you, um, but I'm, so I'm, <laughs> no going to, I'm going to quickly, Baram, I'm going to ask you one quick question. I think it's an important one. Again, you talked about making the notes and then the real-time data and that. I also want to just quickly touch on, before I move to Ian, the, 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 I guess, cyclicity of the mining operations, that people come in and out, the data gets looked at by different people, you know, people move around in the industry. Um, with all this technology, has with the new way of being able to uh, store the data, decipher the data, has that made it easier for an, in, uh, an industry that is notoriously ha has transient people? In some ways, yes. There are still challenges with uh, just because of the variety of like collection styles, like instrumentation that was used dif depending on different era. There's still, I, from my experience, still like incorporating leg legacy data still a bit mm -hmm. challenging. For sure, there are different databases that, uh, you know, once you put a bit of work and kind of getting in there uh, and platforms like Micromine, then it becomes, uh, you know, usable, transferable, transferable. But to get to that stage, uh, there is still uh, some some labor behind it. And uh, it's hard to kind of imagine whether how how that's going to like be seamless, but uh, it's definitely like improving slowly. Um, it Ian, I think this is a good time to, to bring you in. Welcome. Uh, good mm -hmm. to have you on. Good to be uh, on. Um, I, I, think we, I, I think I want to kick off with you from a, a people perspective. Mm -hmm. um, sort of building on what Baram was saying is all the technology of the world is used by people. Um, mm -hmm. My team is, is listening to this already frustrated with me because they know when they get a new system that we're supposed to put in place, I'm the person that has to really work to follow it. <laughs> um, so can you talk a little bit about all the, the with these new systems, that sort of mm -hmm. the, the people side of it, adapting mm -hmm. it, learning it, maximizing their skills uh, within using this technology and, and all that? Uh, well, I guess a lot of these technologies, they're, they're here to really make our jobs easier in a lot of ways. And in some cases, they absolutely do. I mean, there's, a, I think, in a lot of cases, gone to the days of doing endless data entry from like paper geological logs into the computer. I think most people now do it digitally. It's all, all done by a computer, on a computer anyway. And uh, things like that are really, really helping us move forward with capturing more data quickly and kind of eliminating some of that end of the day work that was pretty typical. I think, you know, 10, 15 years ago when people were still logging on paper and things like that, uh, you know, I, I kind of uh, balk at the idea of doing some of these things on paper and then having to like transcribe them again, mm -hmm. you know, but your endless stack of books and things like that. Uh, I think we just got to watch out with some of these technologies is that um, you, you almost become uh, just an operator of the technology as opposed to the person who actually thinks about what they're doing in the background. Um, but, uh, you know, that just means you hopefully save some time by not having to do the manual labor of data entry at the end of the day. Uh, and then you actually have a bit of time to think about what you've been looking at to make your interpretations to then, uh, which hopefully then translates into exploration success later on down the road. Can you sort of split those out though, that, that what are those fundamental skills that mm -hmm. need to be honed and developed um, and not lost as the technology continues to advance? Yeah, so I would I would say it's more just uh, thinking about big picture things. So right now, again, you have all of these different technologies like your core scan and your high logger. Uh, you have a PXRF. You can like, just shoot at a rock and you know ex almost exactly what's in it. Mm -hmm. um, but at the, at the end of the day, you still need to be able to kind of combine those things in the back of your head and be like, oh, okay, well, if we have X and we have Y, that might mean, you know, we're getting close to the target. Uh, right now, we don't really have any, you know, geobot that can tell us. It's like, oh, yeah, the target's, you know, 
pretty close to this drill hole. You just need to put one more drill hole just a little over that way and you're probably going to have success. So right now we still need to have that kind of synthesis in our own minds of the information you're reading in, uh, which can be a little daunting, especially when you're collecting the immense amounts of data that we now can with mm -hmm. a lot of these different methods, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is where things like uh, your all these connected systems, your machine learning and things like that allow you to really take a look at all these you know stacked layers of data and hopefully give you something to look at. But you still have to have that critical thought in the background uh, being like, oh, okay, well, the machine says it, it's right. You know, we don't just jump in both feet. Yes, it's right. No, it's like, okay, we have to think about it critically. Like, oh, is this correct? Or is the machine and is this cluster coming back at us? Does it actually mean anything? Um, and so we really have to not lose those kind of those skills in the background of just basic uh, basic geology skills, I guess. Right. It's 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 about maximizing, not replacing. Uh, yes, exactly. Doing these shows, I, I've learned that quite a bit. Is that it? That's a clear for people if there's sort of resistance to something. Let's say usually there's the confusion that it's um, you know in an automation. That's a big one that mm -hmm. you're maximizing people's value. You're not replacing. Like <laughs> we we don't have that many people just <laughs> surging into the industry. There's no <laughs> we're trying to fill spots, not replace. <laughs> Yeah, there's already a bit of a shortage out in the field right now, so I can't imagine <laughs> laying off any of those people any more than they, you know, may have already been. Well, but uh, uh, yep, sorry. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask too about attracting new ge geologists, um, and Baron, maybe you'd have some input into this as well. Is, is attracting new geologists into the industry and sort of does that technology also? I, I've heard a lot of this in the industry where it's sort of it, it's exciting now to join the industry because of all the technology. It's not. It's not just the old school way of being a geologist. Mm -hmm. Now there's sort of this new crew that has been, it, that, that it's attractive to. Uh, it definitely attracts. I think it's uh, it's a lot more in some ways a lot more accessible to some people because uh, there's a lot more computer focus on a lot of the things that we're mm -hmm. doing, and especially uh, from Baram's side of things, especially there'd be a lot of coding and things, and that's been a very big it was a niche and now it's i would say it's a larger portion of what people are just coming out of school already knowing uh when i went to school it was an option and uh, you could or not take a uh, like a coding class but now it's pretty well i wouldn't say mandatory but you know getting there um and uh and there's just, but it's in the same hand, you're also kind of fragmenting what, uh, so traditionally, you know, a geologist goes and smacks uh, rocks in the field with a hammer. Uh, but now there's so many subgroupings of potential professions that a geologist could do. It's almost becoming like, oh, okay, well, there's a lot of niches now. A lot of people could find something for you, but finding position people who could take those maybe more traditional positions of, yeah, going out and walking through the woods is becoming a little, a little more difficult, I'd say. Baram, your perspective on that? Yeah, I can, I can, I totally understand what Ian is talking about. And uh, I think uh, for new students coming in, I mean, there is definitely a lot of flashy technology. I mean, who doesn't like to play with drones? I know I enjoyed it the first time I was working for work. <laughs> and um, there's also, you know, there's right now we don't really fully incorporate them. There's like the virtual reality or augmented reality stuff. But uh, coding is a big thing. I think what it does uh, yeah, like Ian was mentioning, now people are just coming out of school and they know coding. And for us, it was kind of like optional. Um, but what it does is it kind of gets rid of, from my perspective, it kind of gets rid of the repetitive like, mm. tasks that we, like as geologists, we don't want. And ultimately, boots on the ground, we want to go ham, you know, smash some rocks, take some notes. And, you know, those that's, you want to spend time kind of like looking at the rocks and thinking about rocks. Like right. everything that might need to be done in between whether it's like merging the data or, um, you know, uh, just kind of like leveling the data and whatnot. Yeah. It's like we can use a lot of tools. And I find that exciting because it's it saves time on like things that you just necessarily don't want to do and you fall asleep doing. And it just puts more time on what you actually want to do. Which is in turn is attractive to new people coming into the industry. Yeah. You go, okay, I don't have to do this repetitive sort of thing <laughs> in, in the industry. Well, I spoke like a true geologist, uh, looking at rocks, <laughs> thinking about rocks. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. I, I still think it takes, uh, no matter what to, we have available, it takes uh, some time to kind of come up with the model. And we do have a lot of algorithms. We do have a lot of uh, like the implicit modeling and whatnot. And there's a lot of like geostatistical tool in the machine learning. But um, one of the challenges I actually see is it can, it, like, it's hard to be just black boxy and just uh, that's one of the problems, I think. It needs to be kind of like a little bit transparent. And personally, that's why I, I really enjoy like some of the kind of open source uh, uh, 
programs like you know with python you can do a lot of things that you can kind of see in the background what's happening and it's kind of explained so sometimes uh this idea of that you can kind of like within minutes kind of like just come up with something it's uh it's it's a li little bit scary and i wish it was true but uh, most of the time it uh it isn't it takes a lot of different uh uh ideas to kind of like try and you know definitely machine learning algorithms mm -hmm. kind of makes them easier and kind of pop out things for us to pay attention to but yeah it's uh yeah. Process. Yeah. Um, Ian, I want to go back over to you and kind of zoom out to space, if you will, actually. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the cloud. Um, mm -hmm. We hardly do a show anymore without someone bringing it up in some way. Um, mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because, uh, again, going back to sort of the, the challenges within the industry is this real time data. Mm -hmm. um but geologists they're still a very on the exploration side you're still you're still in very remote areas a lot of times can you talk a little bit about that yeah absolutely <laughs> uh so i think this was the first project the one i just uh, we just recently been working on was one of the first ones i have ever done where i think having one of these fully connected cloud-based systems uh would have actually worked um because we were using starlink which uh you know speaking of technology and big changes that are coming mm -hmm. along starlink was it was pretty uh, um, it was well, pretty not to plug it too much, but it was pretty amazing. We happened to be right on the line where if we we're any further north, we wouldn't have been able to use it. But I mean, the only time the internet slowed down was when everyone was back at camp. And well, previously, you know, you're paying, you know, 30 grand for a internet connection up north somewhere. And you have a really limited data budget and you're like, Oh, well, I need to download this geophysics data set or something like that. And it's uh, Oh, it's a uh, five gigs. You're like, Oh, Okay. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's expensive. <laughs> um, and, and meanwhile, you have, uh, you know, uh, you know, people back in the city who might be like, Oh, in Vancouver, like in a boardroom, it's like, Oh, we would really love to, you know, uh, to have some more real time data back and forth. And, uh, you know, previous to the Starlink usage, um, that was an expensive and slow undertaking. Uh, but having used it now, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. And I, I have a bit more faith <laughs> in the ability to uh, actually send some of this data back live. Uh, and then you yeah, had to download those huge data sets or something like that, that you might've forgotten to bring up on a hard drive earlier on. <laughs> you know, I, I actually, I want to quickly ask you about something that just came to mind is that is a po problem with, with when you're sort of advancing in the industry is that there's so many parts and pieces to it to make it work that you might have the solution in here, but within the workflow, there, there's that challenge. Um, so how do you like, like things like, like the connection, I, I think like Micromind makes, uh, I think it's called the dongle that that's right. So things like that, how does that sort of work into the, the flow of what Ian's talking about? Well, uh, obviously, uh, Starlink is a, is, a, is a solution handy right now that they that they have. Uh, but there are many, still many areas or companies that don't have access to to those connections when they are on the field. So yes, uh, in our licensing offering, yeah, we include some uh, connectivity via dongle, so they don't need to be connected uh, on the to the internet uh, per se. Or uh, no logs also as well uh, as, as a kind of a licensing offering that allows them yeah to be using and uh, yeah using their software wherever they are. Uh, you know, I want to go back to uh, something Baram was talking about and sort of peppered throughout with Ian talking about, you know, being out on site and gathering data. I mean, it's there is this explosion of data. Now there's 3D modeling. Uh, I mean, and it really, it's just getting started. I mean, this technology is just going to get better and better. Um, so how do you, how is Micromine, again, shameless plug because we're allowed to do this on the show. How is Micromine solving that particular challenge of just the explosion of data, the different types of data, the legacy data, all of it coming in? How are they doing that? Well, uh, we have Micromine Origin. Micromine Origin interprets, um, integrates, communicates uh, critical mineral resource uh, information with a state-of-the-art geological um, tool spanning from early exploration to uh, through to uh, resource evaluation. So M Micromine Origin allows geologists to integrate and use multiple, uh, more than 70 different type of files, and th they can be integrated. I mean, there are pl plenty of uh, software solutions on the market. We can easily integrate and, and read more than 25 uh, current resolutions on the market, so they don't have to be concerned or worry about uh, data compa compa compatibility uh, using microminority, for example. So it is some of the um, strengths that microminority offers uh, in terms of uh, 
well, data compatibility or, or data, data legacy no, on the field? Uh, to wrap up this, this discussion, and we've, we've actually covered a lot of ground, and I want to sort of tie it back into going attracting new people. And, and Ian, I'm going to start, start with you. Mm-hmm. Um, well, attracting new people, future development, mm-hmm. processing of huge data. Very simply put, what are you looking for when, when you're bringing on a new technology, a new software, new development? What are you sort of looking for from that developer? And then, Baran, we'll go over to you. Uh, what are we looking for from that developer? So I guess uh, if we're looking at a new technology, it's definitely kind of its its uh, its effectiveness and ability for, you know, when you use it, is it going to give us a, a uh, especially when a lot of these things are quite expensive, you're looking for something that when you, when you bring it on, is it going to give us a clear result or is it going to be something that you're like, oh, well, when it's added with these 20 other things, yeah, it makes sense. But by itself, it's not super valuable. Um, and so it's look, looking for something that really kind of uh, can uh, in one stop can give us one solid answer Yes or no? Is there something good here? Uh, if that makes sense? Yeah, no, it's a fair answer. No, it's <laughs> straight, very straightforward. Uh, Baram, what, from your perspective, what is sort of the the key components that you're looking for? for would you be willing to take on and try a new technology, even? Uh, yes, absolutely. And I think uh, for just kind of think about a platform, it's if there's flexibility in there to kind of be able to like as different styles of data, different forms of data come, uh, we can just kind of put them all in one place. And, you know, uh, Origin uh, does that actually pretty well in terms of uh, being able to have that flexibility of what to bring and being able to kind of automate processes and being able to incorporate some of the tools that are, uh, you know, built into the platform, um, into the into the workflow of processing the data. So that's what I would be looking for. Is it pretty similar what, what both them are saying? Is there some additional things that you find that people are are saying this is what we need, this is what we expect? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, as I was mentioning at the beginning of, of the interview, we, we, we've we been uh, increasing headcount by 40% with a focus on support and mm. customer service. So for us, it's re- really important to be really close with customers. And, um, and for example, we have uh, also put uh, at their disposal a 24-7 a training platform where they can, you know, get up to speed with uh, the new functionalities of the software or just uh, review some, some uh, basic uh, functionalities. Uh, and as the company uh, and the company as the functionalities and the and the softwares become more and more powerful we need to be yeah really close to our customers to make sure they don't waste their time you know trying to learn their software but using it, the software uh, so we put a lot of effort when uh, we are onboarding a new customer on the transition you know on the on the onboarding transitioning uh, because yeah it, there is always yeah, a waste of time and they sometimes they get frustrated because they try to do it on their own and uh, yeah we have learned that by being very close mm. to our customers yeah the customer experience is totally different and their results are immediate are immediately for us it's really important the return on investment that they do on us so we want to make sure we are maximizing it right um no it's lots to cover i know obviously momentum is going to cover a a lot more than we've packed into a 30 minute discussion but i do want to thank you ian uh for joining Mm us for um, for having me for for coming in um and guido for sort of uh, tying it all together with Micromind. It's been a lot of fun. So thank you, everyone. And uh, hopefully we get to do it again sometime. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. you. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, No ads. We just get to talk on this one. So lots of fun. We will see you on the next episode of Mining Now.